Acts chapter 1 verse 4 Bible says and being assembled together with them Jesus he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the Father which he said you have heard from me Father we ask you for your presence to be here in an unusual way we ask for your glory to continue to rest here Father we thank you so much for the lives of our spiritual parents, Dr. Ralph, Mama Regina, for giving us the opportunity to serve you in this capacity. We honor them and we honor you. Bless my brother, bless my sister. Someone's life be changed. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Go ahead, have your seats. If you're online, come on, put something in the chat box. It's good to see you. I want to welcome you to Wildfire 2021 virtual experience. Come on, if you're excited to be in the house. If you're excited to be in the chat room on the zoom come on i see you let me see you go crazy in the zoom real quick come on if your camera's on let me see you go crazy in the zoom let me see you go crazy lord we love you Whoa. i see my father is here we honor you bishop thank you for being here come on honor the general of god i'm telling you in a day like today where people don't honor we choose to honor we honor you general we love you daddy please be seated welcome well tonight i'm going to start you off but we're here because we believe god is going to say something so supernatural we believe there is a presence um every year at the second week of march we gather we call it our winter revival and we gather just as the season is changing from winter to spring and we gather to say god we need a momentum shift we gather to say, Lord, at this time, we are praying for more of you. This conference only has three purposes. The power of God for the Lord to bring us deeper in prayer and for us to hear him clearly in the prophetic ministry. And we've set this day and tomorrow aside to be able to pump an atmosphere and develop an atmosphere conducive for the Lord to continually feel you. I believe that God is going to pour something so supernatural on you today and tomorrow. I'm telling you, it's about to shock your mind. You know, the reason why I say that is because anytime there is an expectation, God has to meet it. The Bible says that the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. That means anytime you give the Lord an expectation, you say, God, I need you to move. God says, I recognize your expectation, so I'm going to move on in. If you came with one level, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Raise your expectations right now. Give the Lord a shout and a praise. If you're in the chat room, come on, raise your expectation in the room for 30 more seconds. No, I don't feel it. We're not there yet. Raise your expectation in the room. I'm telling you. You can receive something right where you are. I know you're up late in UK. I know you're up late in Ireland. I know you're in the United States. I know it's late, but my God is here and he's come with something to give you. If you raise your expectations, you will receive what you require in the name of Jesus. Woo. Acts chapter 1 verse 4 talks about Jesus after he's ascended for many times he comes and he's visiting the disciples and on one of his visits he tells the disciples very plainly he tells them disciples I am I'm going I'm already gone but I'm telling you to wait in Jerusalem for the promised Holy Spirit. I've spoken about it, you know that it's coming, but I need you to be in a place so that you can receive this promise of the Holy Spirit. So he tells his disciples to wait in Jerusalem, to wait in Jerusalem. I find it peculiar because right at that moment, I was teaching on it last week, but right at that moment where the Lord tells the disciples, I need you to stay in Jerusalem, and I need you to wait in Jerusalem. The Bible, you know, history depicts, and theologians try to uh, say that there were 500 disciples that were present when Jesus was speaking, and that message came. 500. Yet, I said it last week, that in the upper room, there were only 120 people there. That means that 380 people thought that there was something better to do than wait in the presence of God. That meant that at that very moment when the word was coming to wait, the Lord knew that even though this word is going to come forth, there will be some people that will leave because to wait, there is a price. 
Because when you come into an atmosphere like this that's conducive for waiting, the Lord knows that you've paid a price to stay in that presence, so he's going to reward you with some glory, and he's going to reward you with some, uh, with some anointing. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall what? Renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as of eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. There's benefits of waiting. We spoke about this last week, and I set it up so that I'll be able to talk to you uh, this evening just as I'm wrapping up. I'm only going to be up here for about 20 minutes or less than that. Prophet's coming, and we're going to enter into the prophetic briefly tomorrow. He's, he's, he's on today, and he's on uh, tomorrow. Can you please honor the prophet of God who is also here? And... Um, and, uh, and we also have Pastor David that is going to be here uh, tomorrow bringing the word. And Pastor Sam that's here. And Bishop that's going to crown it. And all the way from Nigeria, Minister Victoria Renzi is going to be joining us virtually. It's going to be powerful, powerful time. But there's one thing that I've understood is that this waiting thing, this waiting thing that I was talking about, I'm not going to dwell here too long, we're going somewhere else, but this waiting thing is kind of like this quarantine we've been in. I feel like we've kind of been in this place where the Lord has almost forced a lot of us to be in silence and solitude before the Lord. He's almost kind of forced us into this place where we have to wait on him because there's nowhere else to go. I mean, everything's closed. Now things are opening up, but still it's yet not the same. And I feel like it's like this quarantine thing where the Lord kind of put us in this place. And for many of you, you've been in this waiting place. And I really felt the Lord tell me, he says, Kofi, can you tell my people that I told them at the beginning, and they may not have known it, but I made an announcement through different world events and different things that are coming. I, I, I kind of pushed people to this place of waiting. But as we're in the season of waiting, there are some people that have not waited. And there's some people that have waited. He says that there are some people that stuck to say, we want to be the 120, and there's a 380 that have departed from the place of waiting in the season of waiting. And I asked, began to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, prophetically, what are, you do, what are you kind of ministering to me? And the Lord said, Kofi, and I heard this so sharply as I was praying beforehand. The Lord told me this. He said, Kofi, I am sending, this is a prophetic message. He says, I'm sending the greatest awakening and revival in modern time history that you have seen to this land. I've heard it. I'm telling you. He said, I'm sending this revival. I'm sending, I heard the, the actual word was outpouring. He said, I'm sending this outpouring, and it's a wave that's coming, because after you wait comes the outpouring of the power of God, and the glory of God, and the anointing of God. I feel, I'm, I feel like preaching here. It's the glory and the anointing of God comes after you wait on the Lord. And I heard God say, this is the season where we're transitioning out of waiting into outpouring. He says, we're prophetically at that thing. And I said, God, what does this mean for those of us in wildfire? He says, Kofi, for your church and for TLC and for CR, this conference is the mark of the beginning of this outpouring. I prophesy to you and I speak to your destiny that you will enjoy the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in a way you've never enjoyed it before. Come on, this is my first time preaching on a stage in a two months or something. You got to help the preacher a little bit. I said, I see in the realm of the Spirit. I know you You've been waiting on God I know you've been praying on God I know you've been prophesying and believing God to do something but can I tell you that now is the season this is the moment where God is shifting you into a moment of outpouring you will receive new ideas ah you will receive new inventions you will receive a new glory you will receive a new anointing shout yes you will receive it have your seat you will receive it. You will receive it. I said, God, <laughs> I said, God, how do we position ourselves for this mighty outpouring? Two things the Lord told me. First thing he said, spiritual sensitivity. I was talking to the leaders about it on Monday, and I told them that we have to enter into a time of spiritual awareness. We are aware of the times and the seasons of God. The sons of Issachar, they were known for discerning the times and the seasons. I pray you will never miss what the Lord has for you in this season. It's a time of spiritual awareness. That's the first thing the Lord told me. I'm, I'm going through this uh, rather quickly. Second thing he said is that we are going to experience this outpouring through atmosphere. Atmosphere. It's the second thing the Lord spoke to me prophetically. He said, when we begin to create an atmosphere of prayer, we will be, uh, will be able to receive power to prophesy. I'm going to say it again. Lord says, when we create atmospheres of prayer... We will receive power to prophesy. Can you say that after me? Say, when we create an atmosphere of prayer, 
we will receive power to prophesy. When you create the atmosphere of prayer, like we're creating in this place, my goodness, Pastor Shane took us to the courts of heaven, and Christelle took us to the courts of heaven. My God, come on, appreciate them for the power, and CRM took us to another level. You see, what they're doing is they're creating an atmosphere, an atmosphere for you to receive power. For ye shall receive power when the Spirit of God comes. That's a couple verses down. That's in verse 8. He talks to them and says, you're going to receive power. And this power is not going to be just for Jerusalem, but for Judea, for Samaria, for surrounding places. It's going to spread. It's a wildfire. It's going to begin to spread from place to place. It's not just going to be a fire in your spiritual closet, but it's going to be a fire for business and a fire for finance and a fire for fashion and a fire for consulting. It's going to grow, but that growth comes when you pay the price to wait. That's what happens. Am I communicating here? It says when we create this atmosphere for that outpouring, that's when we begin to experience things that we've never experienced before. I said, Lord, speak to me. Why is it that many of us struggle to create the atmosphere to receive power for us to begin to prophesy? He says, son, because this, many people reach a place in their Christianity where they stop pushing past the popular. Pushing past the popular. What do you mean by that? Explain. Sure. In this day and age, it's, it's been increasingly cool to be Christian. It's been increasingly cool uh, to come to church and to do these things that are spiritual. It's becoming more and more accepted, which is a great thing. I'm not knocking it at all. But I'm saying that it can place a limitation on your growth. Because when you always think that things should be a certain way, you will never push past the popular to receive a new thing. And so God told me this one thing. He said, unless we break the old wineskin, we will never be able to receive a new thing in this season. In John chapter 6, Pastor David, the Lord says this. He was walking with his disciples, and all of a sudden, he stopped them and said, I am the bread of life. And he says, if you want to enjoy what I'm enjoying, come into my kingdom, you must eat of my flesh and you must drink of my blood. And everybody thought this was crazy. They're like, what are you talking about, Jesus? <laughs> we should eat of your flesh. That's crazy, man. Eat of your flesh, drink of your blood. That's nuts. But Jesus knew what he was doing. Later on in the verse, the Bible says this. For, for the words that I speak to you are what? Our spirit and our life. He says, I'm speaking to you in the frequency of the spirit. Huh. I don't mean my physical flesh and blood. It's an atmosphere for you to receive this provision that's coming out of me. You need to be around to enjoy some things that I have. But you know what happened? Another bunch of disciples left because they thought it was too crazy. And Peter rose up and Peter said, Father, where am I going for you alone carry the words of eternal life? I pray we become that generation like Peter to say, it's against what's popular, but I will begin to press. I know praying in tongues may be normalized, but I will take it to the next level. I will change gears again. I will change gears again. Can I prophesy to you? Change your gear one more time. You alone, you alone have the words of eternal life. Peter said, God, I don't even care, Jesus, even if it's your natural flesh and blood, I don't care. I've seen what you can do. We're going to enter into times of outpouring where we are going to see what the Lord can do. My God, we are entering into times of demonstration again. You know, we had times of demonstration in our church and that we became a very heavy teaching ministry. The Lord says we're going back into times of demonstration. <laughs> I heard God. The teaching ministry is great. I love to teach. I'm a teacher at heart. I love it. But the Lord said, we are entering the times of demonstration again. My goodness. Oh, my goodness. We are entering the times, Pastor David, of deliverance again. Hey, we are entering into time. Ah. We are entering into those seasons, those times of refreshing. If you believe it, shall I believe that? My goodness. And so... Just as the 380 disciples left, 120 pushed through what was popular, and they found themselves in the upper room. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 3 says, <laughs> and I'm going somewhere. I'm, I'm talking about today a topic uh, I, I entitle uh, a fire, just like fire, uh, just, just like fire. That's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about just, just like fire. Ch Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 3 says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, so this is after their waiting, they were all with one accord in one place, verse 2 says, and suddenly, someone shout suddenly. Come on, it's been a while. We haven't done talk back. Come on, say suddenly. 
It says, there came a sound from heaven. Come on, just give me a little sound, a prophetic sound real quick. Give me something with the symbols. Give me something, something on a, yeah, give me something. It said a sound, a sound from heaven, a sound from heaven. Come on, Jesse, play, play a bit prophetically, play a bit prophetically. Yeah, yeah. It said a sound, not any sound, a prophetic sound, a sound from heaven, a sound from heaven, a sound from heaven. Can I give you a second to release your sound on the inside of you? They said it was a sound <laughs> as of a mighty rushing wind. <sighs> And it filled the whole house where they were sitting, much like here. It says, then appeared to them uh, divided tongues as of, someone shout fire. And it said, and one sat upon each of them. I asked the Lord, I've read the scripture a billion times. A billion times. I said, Lord, I preach from this scripture at least eight, ten times a year. I love the upper room. I'm a revivalist at heart. I love preaching about the Holy Spirit. I'm a Holy Spirit guy. I've read this scripture shows like a billion times, but I never saw this revelation. He said, the scripture says, can we read this together? Just the last one. Just this verse three, one, two, three, and go. Then there appeared to them, what? Div uh -huh. As of, and it sat upon, it sat upon, it sat upon, I never saw this in the scripture. The Lord told me tongues of fire sat upon each of them because everyone needed their own individual experience. And because the fire had to first burn within them before it burned wild without them. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? He said, Kofi, I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that the fire of the Holy Spirit, the fire that is the holy fire of God must first burn within before it can burn without. He told me, he said in the upper room, the reason why it wasn't just a general fire that fell upon them is because people begin to now say it was a collective thing that happened. So we can only experience the fire when we're collectively together. But that's why I love in this season that even though you are at home right now, even though you're in your bedroom, the tongues as of fire, the fire and the experience of God can come upon you afresh. Even as you're in your bedroom, even as you're in Zoom, even as you're on the YouTube. He said, everyone had to have their first experience. The fire must first be wild in you before it can be wild out of you. But our generation has many people who are expressing fire outwardly, but have lost the fire internally. So what happens is we don't allow the fire to do what it's supposed to do, refine. Do what it's supposed to do, break. Do what it's supposed to do, burn things on the inside of us so that we are well and prepared for what the Lord is about to bring. We don't do that. I'm wrapping up. I have three more minutes before the prophet is ready. Prof, please, you can get ready, but to shift into a new gear. The true definition of a wildfire, I'm wrapping up here, is an unplanned, unwanted, <laughs> uncontrolled fire. That's what it means. An unplanned, unwanted, uncontrollable fire. If I go back to Acts, the Bible says, after the Spirit of God came, it expressed itself in Peter in a way he couldn't even understand to the point whereby the Bible says it then gave them the evidence of speaking in tongues. I'm not talking about uh, uh, speaking in tongues today, but what I'm talking about is the boldness that Peter walked in to be able to go out and start preaching the gospel. He couldn't control it. It was an uncontrollable thing on the inside of him. He couldn't control that. He began to preach. You know what happened? Bible says 3,000 people gave their lives to Christ because of something that burned on the inside of them, an experience that somebody had because of an atmosphere that was created. And then I began to understand this. The fire changes you. Another word for this or another way to place this is this, is that when the fire of the Lord comes upon you, it quickens you to do things. It quickens you. This week, I was praying with a, a, a few of them, Pastor uh, David and Pastor uh, Sam and uh, uh, Pastor Nick and a few of our, our guys from across the world. And it was yesterday, right? We were praying yesterday. And do you guys remember that moment we were praying on Zoom and I was closing off the session? Do you guys remember what happened? 
and all of a sudden I couldn't control it. Something came upon me. I couldn't control that thing that came upon me and I began to prophesy and speak over their lives. And I said, God, what is this thing that I keep feeling on the inside of me? He says, son, when you begin to encounter my presence and my power, it quickens you to speak my word. It quickens you to do my work. It quickens you to do that thing. He says, it will be like fire shut up in your bones. And so now we go to our anchor scripture as I'm wrapping up. And we're going to pray in a second. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9, we're going to get to that. You understand the scripture. Jeremiah verse 1 and 5 talks about how God called Jeremiah and he didn't even want to be used. And Jeremiah said, I'm too young and all of this stuff. And how can you use me? He said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Can I stop right there? God knows what you need. He knows what you need. He says, before I formed you, I knew you. I called you a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah, your destiny was already prophetically uh, aligned before you even arrived on the scene. And so all throughout the scripture, they called Jeremiah the weeping prophet because he's a prophet who didn't really want to do it. But God, <laughs> God found a way of getting that yo-yo on him that no matter how far he went, he would reel him back in and say, Jeremiah, I ordained you to do my work. Many of us, myself included, I look at my life, I say, Lord, I don't know what you did with me. I look at myself, I say, Lord, I don't even know how I got here. God said, Kofi, before you were born, I already knew what you'd be doing. I knew you'd be preaching at this conference long before you showed up on the scene. I said, I don't want to do this work. God said, you will do my work. And for many of you, that's the same testimony you have. And so in chapter 20, verse 9, the Bible says this. I'm going to read it out of my scripture. Uh, Jeremiah had prophesied and what happened earlier on the scripture was that he prophesied something that was so terrible against Israel because they were not heeding to the voice of God that Jeremiah was beaten and thrown in jail so now he's lamenting and lamenting and lamenting you still with me Jeremiah is lamenting and this is what comes out of this he says then I said I will not make mention of him. So Jeremiah is, is having this conversation. He says, listen, I told myself I'm not going to talk about God anymore. I'm not even going to engage with the things of the Lord anymore. Nor am I going to speak anymore of his name. But he says, but his word, I tried. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire. It says, shut up in my bones. It says, I was weary of holding it back and I could not. He literally is saying this, I tried to stop because I know I had an encounter with the Lord and this atmosphere and experience birthed something in me and I'm trying to stop. I don't even want to do this thing anymore, but I can't stop the work of God because it's just like fire in my heart and fire in my bones. And even though I'm trying to stop it, the atmosphere that I was birthed into, this atmosphere of glory that I was birthed into this covenant that I walk in doesn't permit me to stop his work he says it's a wildfire on the inside of me that I can't even control it get this he says I tried to stop it but it quickened in me I tried I tried to stop prophesying I couldn't I tried to run away from God but I just couldn't I tried to stop ministry but I just couldn't I tried to run away from the things of God, but it would not permit me. Any time I tried to stop, it was quickening in my heart. His word was quickening. His prophetic word was quickening inside of me. Pastor Kof, what's your assignment? You took a sharp turn. Yes, because the Lord sent me on an assignment tonight. He said this weekend, today and tomorrow is the weekend where the Lord is going to quicken you again. You know what it means to be quickened? uncontrollable fire on the inside of you. You won't even know how to stop it. It will be coming out of you. The Lord says, those days are the days we need. Let's not turn into 1 Thessalonians where the Bible now tells us, do not quench the spirit. Let us not become that generation that's quenching what God wants to do on the inside of us. No, let's allow him to flow just like fire. Let's be on our feet. We're, we're done here. I came to open up the conference today to set the tone. Ordinarily, I teach for 10 minutes and we move on. But I felt this year that there was something that I needed to say. And I don't know who you are. I don't even know where you're watching from. You may be around the world. The Lord told me there is coming a fire that you won't be able to control, but that fire is going to cause you to pray more. <laughs> There's coming a fire you can't control, but it's going to be a fire that's going to cause you to worship more. I mean, it's going to cause you to live right again. It's going to cause you to live in holiness. It's going to cause you to love God again. 
So our prayer now is God burn in me like a fire. A fire that will become a wildfire that I can't control. Just as Jeremiah couldn't control it in him. <laughs> May I not be able to control the fire in me. I don't want to put limits on what you can do through me. No, I don't. Use me how you want to use me. Flow through me how you want to flow through me. Can you take a minute? I don't know where you're watching from. Pray this prayer. God burn in me like a fresh fire. We are creating an atmosphere to receive power to prophesy. But in this atmosphere you find yourself in. Ask the Lord, Lord, burn in me. Burn in me. As God is sending this outpouring. <laughs> as he's unleashing this outpouring of fire. Let your prayer be, God, burn in me. Like a fire that will become wild in me. Ah, oh, burn in me. Like a fire. Arema mansa. Leka sonderebesha. Oh yes, Lord. Oh yes. Oh yes. Ay. Ay, 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 ay. Come on. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Yes, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Quicken me, Lord. Let your fire burn in me uncontrollably. Let it burn in me. Quicken me, quicken me, Lord. Oh, my God. 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 Oh my God, la ba 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 sha, la zigere ba sha, kare ba 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 sha. Quick in the Lord, quick in the Lord. 